The views and opinions expressed in this recording do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Logan City Council. Logan City Council does not make any representation of the accuracy of any such views and opinions. Welcome everybody. Thank you for coming. I know that with a month to go, Christmas is looming. Who's feeling a little bit scared about it? A little bit nervous? Yep, I'm one of those people. We're heading away for a week on Friday and so our focus is on getting everything sorted for a camping trip with two young children. And then when we come back it's the 9th of December and as you know once you're into December it just kind of snowballs and then all of a sudden it's there. So let's see if we can kind of make a bit of a plan for the December month and see if we can stay on top of things. Um, just to give you a bit of background information about um, me as well, um, I am a registered primary school teacher. I haven't taught since 2011. Uh, Little Miss Organised has been running since January 2011. We now have four staff, including myself, and I've just hired a fifth. Um, we're all mums, we're all working part-time, trying to juggle the balance of kids and work and life and all that kind of thing. Um, and we do service a whole range of clients. So while we've mainly focused in the southeast Queensland area, so sunny coast, Gold Coast and Brisbane, we have been as far north as Cairns and as far south as Lismore. So we do service quite a few different people and with quite a few different needs as well. All right, so let's get into it. It's called the silly season for a reason. We have lots of end of year parties, graduations, kids awards nights, speech nights, and now when we, even when we have younger kids, we have kids concerts for kindy and for play group and for daycare and just all these things that are going on at this time of year. So there's a lot of events going on. We've got teacher gifts that we've got to think of. Nowadays there's almost this expectation that you give your kid's swimming teacher a gift. You know, there's just a lot happening, especially when you've got kids. There's the book list that we have to worry about for school next year. Already we are worrying what do we need for next year and we're not even finished this year yet. Then there's the school books that come home and they're full and if you've got a kid that's in prep, you've got a prep portfolio as well as everything else that comes home with it. And it just feels like every year increasingly there's more and more books that are coming home. Family holidays, so I've just mentioned we're going away on our holiday, we're going to Fraser Island, you might be planning a family holiday sometime over the December, January break and you've got to try and fit in the planning for that as well. And then there's the actual event itself, so we've got Christmas Day or Boxing Day or maybe Christmas Eve if that's what you do. Who's heard of this saying, fail to plan? plan to fail. This is your first golden nugget. If you've got some note paper, this is one you should write down. Okay, if you think of an iceberg, 10% is above the water, 90% is under the water, okay? 90% is your planning, 10% is your execution. So if there's one thing you take out of this workshop this morning, you need to be that iceberg with having 90% planning time and then 10% execution. Because if you fail to have that planning time, you are planning to fail. Now how do you plan? First of all we do what's called a brain dump. Who's heard of a brain dump before? Excellent. Okay, so a brain dump is literally where you let your brain go blah. So you sit down, cup of tea, glass of wine, whatever helps you relax, put the TV babysitter on if you need to, big notepad and some pens at work, coloured pens if you like to do colour coding, and you just write it all down. So you might write it down under a few different headings. So you might have school things to do, you might have work things to do, you might have Christmas, and then you might break your Christmas down into gifts, and then you might have that family holiday that I mentioned before as well. So you're just literally going blah onto a piece of paper, writing everything down. And this is everything from buy a gift from for Auntie May to cut the grass the day before Christmas because everybody's coming to my place this year. So this is a brain dump of every little thing that needs to happen over the silly season. Then once you've done that brain dump, and that brain dump can take a while, it can take you 30 minutes, maybe longer if you've got a big list. So you need to gather all that information into one location in a nice organised manner. Hands up if you are a digital person and you like to do everything digitally. Good, okay. Hands up if you're a paper person, you love the physical stuff. Okay, good. Maybe by the end of this workshop I will have convinced you to try a bit of digital because it really is life-changing. 
So with your digital stuff, you can get great apps nowadays that actually help you organize all your lists and you can share them with other people. You can share your wish list. They can tick them off to say they've purchased those items, they've done that task. It can make life a whole lot easier. But if you are a paper person, you need a diary or a notepad or a nice book that you can put all these things into nice and neatly organized. And so when they're done, you can tick them off. So for the people who do like digital, write down these two apps if you haven't heard of them already. So Wonderlist is an app that we've been using in our family for the last few months with great success. So while we just started using this app for groceries, we're actually now using it for our Christmas things as well. So with Wonderlist, what you can actually do is create a list and you can share it with other people and they can literally tick a checkbox to say that it's done. And you can put things into different folders. So you might have that Christmas list folder, you might have the family holiday folder, you might have jobs around the house folder, that kind of thing. The other one is the Christmas list app, which is generally just for Christmas but can also be used for groceries. So the Wonderlist app has a free element and then a paid element. We've just been using the free element in our household with great success. Um, the Christmas list app is about $3. Then once you've gathered all your information into either the app or your paper diary, you need to write a timeline. So you need to look at the next couple of weeks and you need to actually start plotting things out. Don't be that person that knows that you've got this big to-do list of say you need to spend half a day in the garden and then just think, oh, I'll just wait and find a day that, you know, I wake up feeling like I want to do it. That's not going to work. That's once again failing to plan, which means you're going to fail. So in your timeline, you actually need to make some time for when you're going to tackle each of these tasks. And especially if you do have kids around the house, make sure that the really hard stuff can be when the kids are out of the house okay so if you need to do a babysitting swap with a friend if you've got family nearby if you've got an older neighbor who loves kids and would love to take them off your hand for a couple of hours make sure that you actually utilize those people so that you can have a little bit of quiet time to yourself to actually start planning all these things and executing as well so making sure that you've got your timeline in place will actually help you with execution as well You've also got to prioritize. Prioritizing is so important, okay? So when you're going through and you're putting things into your timeline, make sure that you're actually looking at the priority of things. If your family holiday is not actually till January, maybe the second week, there's probably a lot of things that you can put off till after the craziness of Christmas is gone and then you can focus on the holiday. So make sure that you actually prioritize the things that have to be done first rather than the fun things. Because if you're anything like me, as soon as there's anything a little bit more difficult to do, I'll procrastinate and I'll decide to clean the house because I don't want to do whatever that task is, okay? So make sure you actually prioritize and do the things that are the most important. Who's a good delegator? No? <laughs> we need to learn to delegate, okay? It doesn't matter if your children are under five and you feel like they can't do a lot, you need to delegate where possible. When your mother-in-law asks, can I make something for Christmas? You say yes. Even if it's something that you're not going to like, it's an effort, it's a family event, make sure that you're delegating and involving other people. If you need to give them some extra scaffolding around that task, so say your mother-in-law says, okay, I'd like to make something for Christmas, don't just say, okay, yep, what, make whatever you like. Maybe say, okay, here are three options, can you make one of these? Or something along those lines. So work together to create that community feel and delegate where possible. Because you are not an island. You can't do everything yourself. And even though people will tell you that you are supposed to be superwoman or superman and get it all done by yourself, you're not. You need to involve other people. So this is just an example of what some of your tasks might be. So say for example, it's the end of year. End of year. We've got the teacher's gift, we've got the Christmas cards for the classmates, we've got the book list for next year, and we've got to bring home the old school books. You can see that I've got two of them in red and two of them in green. So the two of them are in red, I've thought, this is really more of the mum task or the dad task. And then the two in green, this is the kids task. Because if your kid wants to do Christmas cards for their prep class, their grade five class, whatever class they've got, good for them. You're not doing it. It's just like assignments and homework. It's not your homework, it's not your assignment. If they wanna do Christmas cards, you let them do it. 
and you let them do it in whatever capacity that they can. So if they come shopping with you to pick the cards and if all they can write on their card is their name, then so be it. But what is important is that they are learning that independence of doing that task by themselves. You've got enough on your plate. You don't need to actually be putting extra jobs on your plate when they're not necessary. And let's face facts. Who actually keeps the Christmas cards that their kids receive from their school friends? Not a lot of parents, okay? So don't feel like you have to keep up with the Joneses and do this thing that other people are doing if you don't have time and if your kid doesn't actually really want to do it. Same thing with the school books. So what a lot of parents do is the school books will come home, the kids will come into the kitchen, Mom, here are my books, and then off they run to play. And then Mum goes, oh, great, can't, can't deal with this now, stick it in the tub, into the spare room it goes, and then end of January, oh, there's that tub still. What I want you to do is when the school books come home, if they haven't started to already, is actually spend 10 minutes with your child right there and then, that night, going through and having a look. Get them to show you some things that they're proud of. If they don't want to show you anything, oh, no, I didn't really do anything, no, don't worry about it. Take that as a sign of, okay, they're really not interested. And you can have a flick through and pick maybe five pages that you want to keep for their memory box or none if you're that way inclined and then recycle the rest, say goodbye. Make sure that when the school books come home, you pull out the ones that are brand new or nearly new and that can be reused for next year. There are great charities like PNG Books for Kids who will take all stationery, whether it's half a book used or not, and they will, excuse me, they will send it off to the Pacific Islands for kids in rural school communities, okay? So there are plenty of people who will use your half-used pencils and your scissors, that might be a little bit sticky, okay? So don't think, no, I've got to toss this stuff out. You certainly don't. But you want to make sure that you're delegating to your children and that you're teaching them independence. Because one of the cries that we hear from parents of teenagers and even parents of 20-somethings is that their child is not independent, that their child doesn't know how to get rid of things. I'm teaching a 21-year-old at the moment how to wash clothes because she has never been taught that by her parents because it's just been too hard and she has other interests and they've got other things to do. You need to make sure that you are preparing your children for a life without you because otherwise you will end up with the 35-year-old still on your couch eating all your food and expecting you to wash their clothes. Now, teacher gift ideas. This is often one that a lot of people really struggle with. So if you haven't done the teacher gift ideas, here are just a couple for you. And these are usually gifts that um, they're consumable because what we like to encourage people to do is to have clutter-free gifts. So we've got the cookie, this one smart cookie teacher appreciation gift. So on the um, label it says, you know, thanks, I'm, I'm a smart cookie because you, you're a smart teacher, something along those lines. Uh, then we've got some lemonade vouchers. Thank you for quenching my thirst for knowledge. Um, ice cream, you scream, we all scream for. Oh, let's try that again. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for. So it's an ice cream voucher. Yum. Who wouldn't want one of those? And then we've got a lovely handmade bookmark down the bottom. So if your child's particularly arty, cut out a bit of their artwork, laminate it, put their name on it, wham bam, there's a lovely teacher's gift, okay? And look, most teachers love books, so we love bookmarks too. So some tips for when it's school books and book list time. Hands up, if book list time has come either this year or in previous years and you've just gone, oh, I'll just get the whole list. <laughs> Every year. <laughs> And then it gets to January where you're packing the bags ready for school and you think, oh, I already had that. Oh, I already had that. Oh, I could have saved $40. <laughs> Let's actually invest the time when the school books come home, working out what are the books that we can reuse for next year, save ourselves those $30 or $40 because realistically, we need that money more than Officeworks does, do we? Okay? So order only what you need because every year, if you even if you filled the full book list and you had nothing to start with, there's always an abundance anyway because teachers and schools will always make you order more than less. So with the school books, have that bonding moment, as I was saying, of sorting together. 
getting your child to actually show you what it is that they've been doing in school, what they're proud of, celebrate those achievements with them, especially if it's been a tough year and they've had some really big learning milestones. Get them to select that five to ten pages for that memory box. If you're a digital person, take a photo of them right there and then. Who's heard of Dropbox? Good. Okay. So a lot of people are going to cloud-based storage. Does anybody know what the cloud is? Can someone tell me? iCloud, that's it. <laughs> okay, so the cloud is basically, think of a cloud in the sky and all your data gets stored up there so that no matter if you're on your phone or your tablet or your computer, you can access that information from the cloud. So instead of your computer crashing and you thinking, ah, I've just lost all my photos and all my data, because things are stored in the cloud, you can just download them again onto a different device. And they're nice and secure. You don't have to worry about other people accessing them because you've got the password to them. So it's only people that you share that password with. So Dropbox is another app that uses cloud-based storage. So for example, our entire business is sitting on Dropbox. So I've got my phone back there. I could access any work document I want right now because it's all on Dropbox. And so when you're actually going to do this digital stuff, you can put everything into the cloud and access it at a moment's notice. So that means photos that are 10, 15, 20 years old, documents that you might not have touched for a few years but you still need. They're all just sitting there waiting for you to touch them instead of having drawers and drawers and drawers of filing cabinets. Who's got a filing cabinet? Oh, they're just heavy and bulky and rusty and hard to open and they're just silly things, aren't they? Going digital can really be a problem solver for that one. Make sure that you are ditching the rest though. When you've picked those five to ten pages that you want to keep, make sure the rest do go. Okay, so when it comes time to the Christmas planning, there are three areas. Anyone want to hazard a guess what they are? Food, presents, decorations, beautiful. So decorations, number one. Gifts, menu. Mm -mm. Who looks forward to Christmas just for the food? I know I do. I'm very excited about Christmas food this year. Okay, so decorations. Start as early as you like. Who's actually started decorating for Christmas already? Good. I like to see the spirit. That's great. I have a friend who religiously, October 1st every year, her tree goes up. And I totally respect that because I think there needs to be a little bit more Christmas cheer in the world. So, as you are unpacking those decorations that you haven't touched for quite some time, you need to declutter them. So you need to actually work out as you're putting things up, ah, no, that one's a bit broken, or I didn't use it last year, or I haven't actually used it for a couple of years now, do I really need to keep it? Because if you are setting up for Christmas and finding that you've still got a box or a couple of boxes of stuff that's getting stored over the Christmas period rather than displayed, do you really need them? So really think through your decorations when you're actually putting things up. Do I love it? Do I need it? Did I use it last year? If I didn't, am I going to use it this year? If there's two years in a row where it's no, probably time to go. Involve all the senses. So when it comes time to decorate, don't just think about the sight. Think about the smell. So we're talking diffusers, reed diffusers, or those aromatic diffusers, peppermint, vanilla, cinnamon, mmm. Bake some gingerbread cookies. Touch. You want to have some different senses in the touch department as well. You know, kids just love to touch tinsel, don't they? Because it's sparkly and shiny and it just tempts them. So have some things that they can actually touch and play with themselves as well. The smell we've already talked about. The sound. Are you going to have Christmas carols playing? Are you going to have lovely jingle bells on your front door so that every time someone comes through, the, the door jingles a bit? Are you going to have one of those fluffy Santas or reindeers that you press their feet and they sing a happy little tune? Kids love those as well. So make sure that when you're actually decorating, you're thinking about all the senses. Taste as well. So the gingerbread cookies, the peppermint sticks, all those kind of things. Don't forget to decorate yourself as well. 
don't get to Christmas Eve or a couple of days before Christmas and think, oh, what am I wearing? Oh, I'll just dig something out of the closet that I haven't worn that I don't particularly love. Actually plan what you're going to wear. If you're going to a bunch of Christmas events, what are you going to do to decorate yourself to make yourself feel a bit more Christmassy? I just generally have a pair of earrings that have bells on them so they jingle jangle the kids love them they're always constantly trying to grab them but that just helps me feel a bit more in the Christmas spirit as well so don't forget when you're decorating decorate yourself as well gifts who started buying gifts already brilliant who has not even thought about it <laughs> no one's admitting that funny that hmm <laughs> Okay, so write a list of people to give to. So you could have done this already in your brain dump, but if not, this is the time to do it. So writing it down, everyone in your life that you feel like you want to give a gift to. Don't get sucked into the people that you feel like you have to give a gift to. And certainly don't get sucked into the mindset of having to give better bigger than Ben-Hur, better than last year type presents, okay? Gift giving is about giving from the heart and it's about giving... Um, to people that you really love and appreciate. So don't necessarily worry about budget. Having said that, don't buy a $150 item if a $30 item will do, okay? Set yourself that budget because we all have financial constraints at Christmas time. But make sure that, say you have got that $30 budget and you find the perfect gift and it's $20. Don't think, oh, I've got to spend something to get to that $30 mark. I've got to spend another $10. Don't worry about that. Worry about finding a gift that is perfect for that person and that is suitable rather than sticking to it must be $30 worth of stuff. Who plans for extra gifts every year? Hmm. Inevitably, there is a neighbour or a teacher or an old friend or someone from church who drops around before Christmas with gifts and you think, ah, ah. What do I have for them? It's a bit like Halloween when the kids come knocking on the door and I'm not prepared and I think, I don't do Halloween, what are you doing? And I gave them mandarins this year. I'm sure they were really excited about that. But make sure that you actually plan for those people who are coming around and maybe giving some extra gifts. So you might just do something like a couple of extra boxes of chocolate. If you like to hand make stuff, have a couple of cellophane packets of gingerbread biscuits or some sort of Christmas cookies. Maybe you do Christmas cake. Just have a couple of small extra gifts hanging around for those people that inevitably will drop in. And you know what? If it's food based and you don't get those people dropping around, that's more for you. Write a wish, list, a wish list for yourself. Who actually does this already? Good. A lot of people actually say, oh, I don't know, I couldn't do that. It feels too selfish or, you know, it's all about me. It's actually a really selfless thing to do because you're telling the loved ones in your life, these are some ideas of things that I would like or that I would need rather than giving them absolutely no idea whatsoever what to get you especially when it comes time to your spouse because as much as we might have been married for a long time and our spouse knows us really well if yours is anything like mine they get to Christmas and they think I have no idea what to buy her so a wish list is actually taking a lot of the stress out of it for them and if you use something like the Wonderlist app app you can actually share that list with those people so I've shared my Christmas wish list with a few of my family as well as my husband so that they can all have a look and see what sort of things are, are good ideas. It just takes the stress out of it, okay? And we usually get our kids to do it. They write a Dear Santa letter, don't they? So if kids are doing a Christmas wish list, why shouldn't we? Who does cards? Sort of. <laughs> it's a dying art, isn't it? <laughs> So whether you do Christmas cards or you do a Christmas newsletter, now is also the time to make sure you write that list of who you need to send those cards to or who you need to send those, that email to, making sure that you've got their most current address. And you know, it can be a really nice touch at this time of the year just to ring people up if you're not sure if their address has changed and have a quick five-minute chat. Hi, Auntie May, just calling to see how you're going. Yep. Just checking that I've got the right email address for you. Oh, beautiful. Okay, well, have a great day. I'll see you at Christmas or, or whatever it is that you want to say. But this time of year, actually spending quality time with people just in a five-minute conversation can also make life a little bit happier for us as well. 
Who's got a gift wrap station? Excellent. Okay, so you should have this all year round, but if you don't have one already, now's the time to start one, and then you can just use it for the whole year. So basically, a gift wrap station is just a box or a bag or however you want to store it with everything that you would need to wrap gifts. So your gift bags, your gift wrap, your ribbon, your scissors, your tape, um, whatever you need to wrap is, is what would go into this box. So years ago, Avon came calling and I bought one of those flexible gift wrap boxes that has your rolls space and then it has a couple of smaller pockets for cards, um, ribbons, all that kind of thing. And every time there's a gift or a party that comes up, bring it out, open it up, and I've got everything I need right there to be able to wrap a gift. Okay? So that just makes it a lot easier as well. Also, at the end of Christmas, feel free to pick up a, a wrap, a roll of wrap or two, cheap, half price, sometimes 75% uh, off for next year if you don't already have a fair amount of wrap because this just helps you save a little bit of money as well. Once again, delegate. So if you need to buy gifts for your family as well as your spouse's family and you really don't have any idea what to buy your spouse's family and they're perhaps not very cooperative in giving you some sort of wish list, delegate it to your spouse. Here you go, honey, your family, your ideas. If they all end up with $50 Bunnings cards, so be it. There was one year where my mom delegated to my dad and dad said all us kids got $50 Bunnings cards. And you know what? We were renovating, so it was fine. <laughs> and realistically, you can pretty much buy anything at Bunnings anyway. Start online purchases now. So if you are going to be shopping online, if you're going to do any sort of photo products, so photo mugs, um, mouse pads, any of that kind of thing, now is definitely the time to start doing it. Because as we get closer to Christmas, they get busier and busier and the wait times become longer and longer. And you do not want to be that person that gets to December 14 or December 17 or December 21 and thinks, ah, oh, I don't have a gift for that person because it's going to take too long to online deliver and all the stores like Kmart and Big W are not doing it either because it's too late. Everywhere has a deadline. Do the planning now. So the perfect gift. The perfect gift is clutter-free. Can you repeat that? The perfect gift is clutter free. Write that down if you haven't already, okay? Who needs more stuff in their house? I didn't see any hands there. Are you sure? Do you have to think about that? Hmm. Who feels like they'd actually like to get rid of some stuff out of their house? Let's let's see a show of hands. Beautiful, okay? We're all trying to actually offload stuff in our lives, not actually gather things in. So why would you curse other people with giving them stuff that they probably don't need when they're probably in the same boat as you and trying to downsize, simplify and minimize? A clutter-free gift is going to be the best way that you can show that person that you love them, that you appreciate them, but that you appreciate that they don't need more stuff in their house. So I'm going to give you a couple of different ideas for some clutter-free gifts. So if it's a female that you're buying for or if it's a very manly male, you might like to buy some beauty products or you might like to make them yourself. So I just did a bit of a Google and found some great things online. If you're not into Pinterest, you should get into Pinterest. It's just amazing. Okay, so this was just a lime and a mint foot soak. Oh, yes, please. Not only is that amazing for someone like me with two young children, it's the thought of having that 10 or 15 minutes to myself to actually soak my feet. That is part of the gift. Because if someone gives me a gift like that, sorry, honey, I have to use the gift. It's going to go off. I have to have that 15 minutes foot soak. Bath bombs are another great one. We love to have a nice relaxing bath. If you've got a friend who's got a young baby, maybe you'd like to buy or make them some natural baby care products. They're always really well received because they get gone through really quickly. Food. Who doesn't like receiving food at Christmas? Gingerbread houses. Mm -mm. The cookie mix jar or a hamper. So once again, I just found these all online. This one in the middle comes from the organized housewife. The hamper over the side, this used to be something that my Oma, my grandma, would give my parents every year without fail. And so as a kid, you knew at Christmas time there was some pretty exciting food in the house that you could just, you know, 
happened to wander in and get because we didn't have a lot of goodies throughout the year. But Christmas time, I always knew that there was some really nice chocolatey treats in the cupboard. Tickets. So maybe um, an Australia Zoo pass. Maybe tickets to QPAC. Maybe tickets to the movie. And you know what's even better than just giving tickets? Saying that you will take the person yourself. Saying that part of the present is for you two to go together. Because if the person you're giving to is anything like me, I'm a quality time person. I actually want to spend time with you more than get a thing from you. So tickets are a great way to give someone an experience, a clutter-free gift. Time. So what I found as my grandparents got older, they didn't need any more stuff. They were constantly trying to downsize anyway. So all they really wanted was time with us. So every year we made sure that we would give a coffee or a lunch or a dinner as part of our Christmas gift so that we could actually go out and spend time together with them. And they appreciated that so much. Now, you may be feeling the financial pinch at Christmas time. That's perfectly normal. So here are just a couple of free gift ideas that might help you out. So personal service ideas. So maybe one of your children, for example, maybe you've got teenagers and they'd like to give a gift to someone in the family, but they don't have a lot of money. But maybe they could wash the car. Or maybe they could wash daddy's car. Maybe they could mow the lawn. Maybe the gift is that they help you clean the house. You can put these on your wish list as well, you know. Maybe the gift is to babysit for someone. So if you're feeling financially strapped, but you know someone who you'd really like to bless in some way at Christmas time, and they're maybe parents of a young family, give them the gift of a night's babysitting. I tell you what, even though we have two sets of grandparents nearby and they babysit for us a lot, we still, every time we want to have any sort of date night, feel that guilt of, oh, we're asking the grandparents to babysit again. So having friends actually offer to babysit is a really big blessing for us. A massage, this might be a really good one for your spouse. Foot massage, neck rub, whatever it might be. It's all about that time and it's all about giving to people without it having to cost the earth. Quality time is often the most important thing that we can actually gift and time, time is really our most valuable currency. On to the food. Okay. Who's having Christmas at their place this year? Excellent. Have you picked the menus? Good on you, girls. What are you having? A hot Christmas? Yep. So what? You have a turkey? Chicken, ham, pork? Oh, you've got the whole barnyard there. Excellent. Okay, and what about you? What did you have in your menu planning? Mm Mm-hmm. Ham chicken plum pudding sounds delicious. Yep. Oh, so she's delegating. So she said to the other other family members, you're bringing the chicken, you're bringing this, you're bringing that. That's excellent. I like to hear that. They offer. Beautiful. Look, if they offer, you have to put a needle to their finger, whatever happens as long as you're delegating, okay? So in our family, we normally have a seafood type Christmas with a bit of a Christmas ham, and I just love it. Of course, this year with a little bit happening down here, uh, seafood's not really going to be happening for me because I'm not allowed to have it, which totally devastates me. So please all go out and enjoy some seafood for me. Delegating, once again. Are we starting to hear a theme here? Yeah. Shop early, okay? So don't leave your big Christmas shop till two or three days before Christmas because that's what everybody else does. And you will come home from the car park and the shopping centre swearing and cursing because some person has done this in the car park and someone was really rude in the grocery line and people just, even though it's supposed to be a time of happiness and joy, people are stressed at Christmas, they're a bit cranky. So if you can avoid the shops, do it. So you can look at options like online shopping, click and collect, where you've actually ordered it and you just go and pick it up, or the online shopping, they deliver it to you for a fairly small fee. If you need to actually go to the shops, try and do your big shop at least a week, 10 days before Christmas, and then just do your little pickups 
right beforehand because everybody needs to get things like milk and bread right before um, those couple of days of the shops being closed. But nowadays, shops are pretty much open Boxing Day, so it's not a huge drama anyway. So just make sure that you're prepared and you don't leave things till the last minute because you do not need that stress of going to the shops along with every Tom, Dick and Harry two days before Christmas. So prepare what you can before the event. Think of a chef. If, if you go to a restaurant, the chef's not going to cook everything up from scratch. He's not going to go pluck the chicken out of the backyard, pluck its feathers, boil it, do all that right there and then. It's already prepared somewhat, isn't it? So do the same thing with your Christmas menu. Whatever you can do before the event, actually prepare it beforehand. And then just do the fresh stuff on the day, the day before, whatever it needs to be. I want you to write this one down. Christmas is for you as well, okay? Christmas is not you being a slave in the kitchen. Christmas is not you serving everyone else and making sure that great Aunt May and her cantankerous ankles are comfortable while you slave away in the hot kitchen, okay? You actually need to enjoy the day with your family as well. And if that means that you say no to a few things, like no, that person's not coming, or no, we're not going to split the day between my parents and your parents... Do what you have to, okay? Simplify Christmas so that you actually make it a more enjoyable time for you. Because this is not just about everybody else, okay? You need to actually enjoy Christmas as well. So a bit of 101 prep. Decluttering. <sighs> Good fun. So how do we actually declutter in preparation for Christmas? This is especially important if Christmas is going to be at your house or if any sort of Christmas event in the next month is going to be at your place. Because you don't want to be that family that has five doors shut in the house because they're full of baskets of stuff that you've just swept off the counters and hidden away, never to be seen again. The amount of houses that we actually go to where there are just tubs and tubs and you can see the layers of the stuff that's come off the kitchen bench, unopened mail, batteries, school books, all these kind of things where they've just been swept into a tub because, oh, somebody's coming and we need to get it out of the way and into the spare bedroom it goes and it does not ever come out again. And then all of a sudden someone needs to come and actually stay in the spare bedroom and they think, oh, goodness, I need to declutter and clean it out so they can actually sleep in the bed. That's when they call us in. Don't be that person, okay? Go through and declutter methodically around the house before the event comes so that you're actually prepared. So that two days beforehand, you're not thinking, oh, sweep it all into a box. So whether you spend 10 minutes a day in each room, whatever your goal is, actually do a surface tidy in every room to get it a bit more decluttered. Get ready for some fresh and new. When we hold on to things from the past, we're not actually allowing room for things for the future to come in. So when you're holding on to things from this year, last year, 10, 20, 30 years ago, you're not actually making room for all the new stuff to come in. And I'm looking around and you're all a bunch of young ducks. You've got plenty of life left in you, okay? There's a lot of good stuff and new stuff that needs to come in but if you're constantly keeping old stuff, whether it's in your head or in your physical spaces, you're not actually allowing any room for new things to come in. That's why when people have a divorce or they are single after a, you know, a very long-term relationship, one of the recommendations is to do a declutter and to really get rid of some old stuff out of their lives so that they can make some space for some new things to come in. This is the same thing. Christmas time is when a lot of new stuff comes in. And especially January with being a new year and we're making New Year's resolutions, it's a time for new and for fresh. So make sure that you've paved the way and you've prepared the room for some fresh to come in. If you've got kids and you know that your in-laws or your parents are just going to go crazy with the gift buying this year, then you actually need to make sure that your kids are prepared for that stuff to come in. Because once again, if you don't actually make way for that new stuff to come in, where's it all going to go? You'll be running down to Ikea because you need more storage because you didn't actually get rid of old toys that the kids are no longer playing with. So get your kids, this is pretty much any age, you could do this with a two-year-old, get them to fill 
a basket of some sort, whether it's a small one or a laundry basket if they're bigger, especially if they've got an abundance of toys and you want them to do a bit of a declutter, give them a bigger basket. Get them to fill it with toys, books, even clothes if you like, that they no longer use, they no longer love, that they're happy to donate to somebody else in readiness for the new stuff. And just say, you want new presents for Christmas? You have to fill this basket. You don't fill the basket, you don't get new presents. Saves you a bit of money, really, doesn't it? Okay? But every kid will do it because every kid wants new stuff. It's just the way they're wired. If you've got some fix-it jobs around the house that need to be done, especially if Christmas is at your place, maybe the garden needs a bit more mulch, or there's a few light bulbs that need replacing, or there's a couple of holes in the wall for some, from some temper tantrums that need fixing, whatever those little fix-it jobs are, start planning them out in your timeline and actually working out, okay, we're going to fix this, we're going to fix this, we're going to get these little jobs done before Christmas happens so that when people come over, we feel like the house is kind of looking its best. Garden makeover included. So prepare your supplies for Christmas Day. If you know how many people you've got coming, make sure you've got enough crockery, cups, plates. And you know what? Don't stress about having to have ceramic for everything. Don't be that family that keeps a set of 12 or 16 because once every three years Christmas is at your house. Who needs that? If you only have a family of four and you can easily get away with six plates or eight plates on an everyday basis, don't feel like you have to cater and keep stuff for that once in every three years event. Because realistically, paper plates, plastic plates, for most of us they do just fine. If you'd like to have ceramic, hire them out for the one day. It's going to be a lot cheaper than you having to store these, buy and store these things for years at a time and taking up all that physical space and that mental space of, oh, I've got all these plates and I'm never using them. Because when we have these massive dinner sets, we constantly look at them and think, oh, if only I was that person that had dinner parties for 12 every other weekend. Who has time for that? No one does. So don't be that person that keeps things for that 10% of the time when 90% of the time, four or six of them will do just fine. If you haven't started planning, when's the time to start? Now! Now is the time. So if you're finding that it's too much to handle, we all have that friend who is super duper organized, who loves to tell you what to do, who loves to just get involved. I think we've got one here in the room. <laughs> Be that person for someone if they need it. But make sure you call in reinforcements. Once again, you are not an island, okay? It takes a community, it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a community or a village to do Christmas, okay? Because Christmas is for everybody. So make sure if you do need help, you call in some help and you get some help to organize it, to delegate whatever you need to do, to do what needs to be done. So these are just some of the places that you can see um, Little Miss Organised if you want to learn more. That's our um, Facebook page up the top there. That's our website down there um, on the bottom. Uh, as Jennifer mentioned before, we're on ABC and 96.5 frequently. Um, please connect with us.